Jesus precious name. Hey man. All right. So to recap what where we left off these last couple weeks, there is a true gospel and a false gospel. For by grace are you saved through faith. Grace is an undeserved mercy and favor. Faith is hope in things unseen. It's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. It's the gift of God, not of works. Lest any man should boast, amen. You see, if you believe in another Jesus who loves your sin also, you believe in another gospel. If you don't believe in the, the virgin birth, the sinless life, substitutionary atonement, and bodily resurrection, you're going to split hell wide open, Daddy. You have to believe in a Jesus who hates your sin, but loves you so much, he came to pay your criminal debt and trust in nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that being said, we already talked about a true gospel versus a false gospel. So let's go ahead and get into the power of the true gospel. Hey, man. So the context to Paul is he was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a true Jew from the tribe of Benjamin. That's the nation of Judah. He wasn't from those ten, those top ten nations that apostatized, bless God. You see, he was from the Confederate States of American Israel. He was from the South, Daddy. He was from the Bible Belt, bless God. He was a Southerner. He had something to be proud of. He, he wasn't a part of those apostate Northern Ten. But you see, he was also a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was righteous among the righteous. Self-righteous, that's the way it really was, amen. amen. But you see, and also he was a Sanhedrin scholar. He knew his stuff, and he knew he knew his stuff. That's why Apostle Paul, even after salvation, had to work so hard on saying, if I boast in anything, boast in Christ. He knew he knew. He knew he was the smartest of them all. But you see, he was the greatest of the apostles, but he regarded himself as the least of the apostles because he persecuted Christ's church. And also God put a humble spirit on him. Amen? Amen. So, so first off, there's an irony here, okay? There was a Pharisee of Pharisees, a Sadducee scholar, who was brought in after the death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ to be the uh, apostle who, who brought in the Gentile church age. That, hey, you know what? We weren't plan B, bless God. Jesus came to die for me, amen? You see, uh, back in the book of Isaiah, uh, the Lord uh, told us that a spiritual nation was coming in the local New Testament church age. Uh, Abraham prophesied that the sons of Shem would inhabit the tent of Japheth, amen? amen. Hey, the tent is a spiritual thing, amen? The tabernacle was a tent. Everything in the tabernacle symbolized Christ. And the dominant force in the local New Testament church age was the uh, was the sons of Japheth, you know, the European people. You know, God used the uh, the Greeks in the beginning and all the way through to preserve his word. God used the, the, the Brits to give us the King James Bible to bring in global missions through the British Empire. And now America is really the uh, powerhouse of global missions. Mm -hmm. Even still, as fundamentalism is fading, that's still true, amen? That's why we don't sing God bless America. God have mercy on America, land that I love. And I'm trusting in him to keep having that mercy, amen? amen. All right, so that being said, but it was also an irony that Paul, hey, look at this beautiful one, amen. <laughs> the Pharisee of Pharisees was the one God called because, you see, these stubborn, stiff-necked Jewish uh, brethren who were the apostles, Apparently, they forgot somewhere along the line that Jesus said, go forth and preach the gospel unto every creature. You know, maybe they got a modern Bible perversion that changed that that changed the, the, the Great Commission from go preach the gospel to every creature to go make disciples. Amen? You see, they forgot. So Apostle Paul had to come along and be called to God to set them straight on the Great Commission. Amen? So let's get into verse 13. 
of Galatians 1. For ye heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. You see, I, I'm not going to have. I'm not going to get into all the all the, the gruesome details, but Apostle Paul was there and held Stephen held the coats of the men who stoned Stephen, the first martyr of Jesus. Amen. Mm. He went from town to town murdering Christians, Jewish brethren who converted to Christianity. He was wicked as can get out, but he did it in ignorance. You know that, mm -hmm. and he got right with God on a Damascus road. Amen. Verse fourteen. And, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So first off, I'm just going to throw this out there, friend. False religion really is profitable. Like if you were to just start a cult, I mean, look how, look at the, the, the opulence of the, Mormon, of the Mormon temple in Utah, amen? Mm -hmm. I right. mean, look at how rich Joel Osteen's gotten. Yeah. I mean, look, some of the richest people in America are Kenneth Copeland and Joel Osteen and uh, Joyce Meyer. Jo I mean, they, mm -hmm. Joyce Meyer and Kenneth Copeland say they're little G gods because they can't rightly divide, right? right. They, they don't know that that's a future promise that we're going to have the power of angels when we come back to rule with Christ. So they, they literally think that in a life or death situation that they're going to have a superpower to move a mountain. Mm. They really think that. I mean, they literally think that they could walk through the desert, see a mountain, and then command it to move aside, and, 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 and a pot of gold and a gallon of water is going to be underneath it. Straight out of hell. Mm. Amen? Wow. Amen? But that being said, also, crime pays for a season. You see, you can you can rob a bank and get a lot of money for a while. You can all kinds of. That's why they had to come up with a RICO statute to take away organized crime money. Mm -hmm. It's because it pays for a season. And you know what? Apostle Paul was basically a hitman. Yep. He was murdering for hire. So he was a rich false teacher, and he was a and he was a rich hitman. Also, just because you're zealous does not mean you're right. Okay. So first off, there's such a thing as zeal without truth. You know, these Muslims strapping uh, bombs to their little kids, you know, to blow up a train in Israel, they got a lot of zeal, don't they? Is it true? No, they're going to burn in hell. We don't want them to burn in hell. We want them to get born again, bless God. Hey, you know what? You don't, oh, uh, well, that's so hateful. You know what? You're hateful because you don't understand the fact that Jesus Christ is the only thing that's going to save these people from hell. Hey, man. Hey, you can like that, lump that, bump that, jump that, or take that across the street and dump that, bless God. But there is one mediator between God and man. Amen. The man Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. Hey, uh, a sorry Talmudist and Kabbalist, bless God. If you have not the Son, you have not the Father. If you hate the Son, bless God, you, you, you hate the Father. There are three that testify in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Hey, hey, we're King James here. That's still in there. Hey, man. Hey, man. Amen. God. Zeal without truth is a dangerous thing. Yep. But you know, there's also such a thing as zeal with truth, but no grace. Mm. Do you? Re I mean, you know what? I think it's fair to say that every time we go out and we see a Roman Catholic Mary idol, aka Diana of the Ephesians, every time we see a Peter statue, aka Apollos. Every time we see somebody walking down the street in uh, a Tampa Bay Buccaneer skull and crossbones cultic murder shirt, or a uh, Brock Lesnar Moloch shirt, or a Dwayne the Rock Johnson Brahma shirt, we don't want to hurt the people using them. But man, we just love to smash those things and set them on fire. Amen? Amen? But we don't do it. You know why? You know, when they did that in the Old Testament, friends, that's because the, the law of God was the law of the land. You see, we can't do that anymore. You see, we smash it with the power of the gospel. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
just because you have a zeal with truth doesn't mean it's a righteous zeal if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And you know what? What good is it if you smash every single idol on the planet, but then the idolaters still burn in hell? Right. Amen! Yeah. Amen! Right. right. You see, that's that, that you see that's why God says well if you if you're King James it's still in there the modern Bibles it ain't in there study to show thyself approved rightly dividing the word of God a workman that need not be ashamed right. if you're not rightly dividing this word you're gonna be you're gonna be ashamed of yourself amen oh, yeah. so amen. also there's such a thing as zeal for for the truth of your heritage a heritage of truth without knowledge of why and without a Holy Ghost filled passion for it mm. I mean do you really think that you're going to preserve a King James Bible believing church for the next generation when all you can do is get behind a pulpit and say I love this King James it's all I know mm. no amen mm. I'm King James only because I know about the other ones why do I stick with the hymns I I'm sticking with the hymns because because I do know the other stuff. Hill song straight out of hell. Worship in the whore of Babylon uh, in Revelation 17. Water, you know, oceans. You know, hymns, good posture, lifts up. You know, a lot of this carnal stuff. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, that ain't that ain't that ain't of the Lord, folks. You know, one of the spiritual gifts is discerning spirits. Little s spirits, that's devils. Amen? Amen. If you don't have if you have a zeal for a heritage of truth without knowledge and without Holy Ghost unction, you you might not apostatize, but guarantee the next generation will see you as a fool. Hey man. Amen. Alright, so verse 15. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by grace by his grace so you know what I'm gonna wrap up with this friends we're born again not a corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed the Word of God which liveth that's current tense and ongoing tense and liveth and abideth ETH that's current and ongoing tense forever the Word of God, the King James Bible, is going to live forever. Amen. It abides forever in our hearts. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the you know the Spirit that was in Christ is in us. The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So you see, you're saved. It's an undeserved mercy and favor. If you have to persevere till the end to keep your salvation, that ain't grace. Mm -hmm. If you have to. Uh, repent every time you sin to get your salvation back that ain't grace friend mm. if you have to do works to get salvation that ain't grace friend right. it is Jesus Christ who paid your criminal debt on the cross plus or minus nothing you're not being saved when you're born again bless God you are saved Jesus Christ was crucified from the foundations of the earth amen for by grace are ye saved through faith. Grace is an undeserved mercy, an undeserved favor. Faith is hope in things unseen. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works. You can't buy a gift. You can't earn a gift. If somebody takes a gift back because they don't like what you've done with it, it wasn't a gift, bless God, it was a loan, amen. Mm. And you know what? Jesus Christ will chasten and scourge all true sons. Right. And if you're not chasing and scourge, you're not a true son, bless God. You're a bastard. I'm not cussing. That's Hebrews 12, friend. You can never stop being a son, but Jesus Christ will discipline you if you're not a good son. Amen? Amen. It's the gift of God, not of works. Let's what what is works? Anything added to grace? It's now works and no more grace. Yeah. Lest any man should boast. The people who go before God and say, Oh, I, I cast out devils. I, I helped widows across the road. I stopped for turtles and ducks crossing the road. Uh, I, I, I gave money to the to whatever, whatever. I gave out food at the homeless shelter. Depart from me, the worker of iniquity. I never knew you. 
You know what? When I go before God the Father, I'm just going to zip that lip and say, right there, that's my lawyer. That's also the guy who paid my criminal debt. Amen. And you know what? He doesn't just save you from hell. He saves from sin, death, and hell. We serve a God who saves from the guttermost to the uttermost. Hallelujah. And friend, I got some good news for you. Come on back next week and we're going to see how great of a miracle that it was that God used such a disgraced, worldly, self-righteous vessel defying all the qualifications to do such great works because God did a great work in Paul and God did a great work through Paul. Amen? But also, I'm going to zero in on just one other thing. When it said that it was uh, that, that God was revealed in Paul, yeah, I'm going to save that for next week because there's some really good nuggets of truth and the oh, the amazing obstacles that God uh, overcame to put Apostle Paul in the place to be uh, the least among the apostles who became greatest. Hey, the last shall be first. Amen. 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 God loves those who esteem others before themselves. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son. Help us to serve you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.